I've had a few questions on the channel previously about Australian concrete mats and how they perform over time. So I'm at a commercial nursery just near Lismore in northern New South Wales where it's not unheard of to get two metres of rainfall in a month and they've certainly had some wet conditions recently. I'm with Troy from Australian Concrete Mats and Troy, this is a job that you supplied for just a little while ago. Yep. How long has this been in place now, mate? Uh, a bit over six months. <laughs> And there was a bit of an issue with erosion here for this uh, for this nursery, wasn't there? Yeah, it seems like he, he couldn't keep up with the water coming down the hill and it yep. would just tear out he, where he would take his um, trucks and buggies down. He yep. would just come around the corner and just dig it out. So he's actually used the concrete mats um, as a base for his roadway. So he's yes. actually driving on these yes. things. Yeah, so they're tough right. enough to drive on. Yes, very tough. It's not going to move. It's better than a, a, and cheaper than a, a full concrete slab driveway. So all he's done is he's laid down the concrete mat and thrown some crushed rock over the top and then driven on it. Yep, that's it. The rubble goes in, it gets caught in those little lumps. Yep. And then water will just go straight over the top and it won't dig it out. So this is one of the worst sections, isn't it, Troy? Yeah, the water flows down off all these terraces and it's got to flow. This is a yeah. result where it comes down and it's got to flow right through to the bottom of the property. We've got a little bit of road base wash away, but these blocks... Are still in place, yep. Still in place, there's no movement or removal of ground underneath that geomatting, is there? No, if they really want to, they can just scrape that back up and fill it back in. It's working? Yeah, that, that, that's it. In theory, most things, they want to have a, um, a drain off to the side, so they'll make the water float to the side and then have a spoon drain off the side, but yeah. they can't do that here yep. because you've got the plants either side. So exactly, they, it's all high-value production, isn't yes, it? Yes, that's it. So they'd rather lose the driveway than their plants. Yep. Now, you've also got a couple of flavours of geotextile, and people need to be aware of that, don't they? The matting that you sell, you sell different thicknesses and you sell different degradation rates yes, of geotextile. Yep. So for a situation like this, it would be wise to have a geotextile that doesn't degrade quickly because that's going to create a very firm base underneath for you and stop that water getting underneath the concrete blocks, isn't it? Yeah, you don't want it to break down, so we use this non-woven um, geo. Okay. So the water will, it will, it will soak through, but it's not going to chew out from underneath the block without any underlay. Yep. It will just wash away and then it's pointless actually having it down there. So the underlays are a big big thing for these mat. So you do have a solution for people that want to use this on driveways and don't want grass to grow. That's exactly right. Because your right. normal concrete mats allow the grass to grow through. Yep. You have a solution now for driveways that is more erosion resistant and that won't let the grass through. That's exactly right. Now there's a significant tip here isn't there Troy and that is always overlap your matting on the uphill side so that the water doesn't erode the mat on the downhill side and we can see this done well here. Yeah that is exactly right. So if it, you butt it up end to end, it yep. doesn't matter if you pin it or not, the water's going to get underneath and start digging it away. So what we recommend is putting two blocks to overlap. So a two block overlap. Two block overlap and that way it'll hit that and then flow over the top. There's no coming back to start chewing out underneath it. Having the overlap like that it's actually slowing the flow of the water. So it'll hit this, it's like yep. a speed bump for the, the water that flows down. So yep. hit that, slow down, slow down, slow down, all the way down. So that, that way you're not having a hard flowing river down the bottom, yep. it's actually slowed it up. Now you've got a macadamia farm that you're gonna take us to now and you're gonna show us how this concrete mat, the same concrete mat behaves completely differently with a different underlay. Yeah, biodegradable underlay underneath this next one. So Troy, we're just a few minutes up the road here at a macadamia farm just outside of Lismore. They also get a fair bit of rain as well. And they've had a completely different approach with their concrete mats. This is a concrete mat here that's going up and they're actually using this for on-farm tracks when they're spraying. Yeah, that's correct. Yep, you can see here, here it's a really wet where they haven't got the mat. Yep. very slippery as soon as they come onto the mat they can actually get around this corner that, yeah, here yeah it's a lot drier isn't it it's yeah. creating more drainage yeah that's it yeah and they've they've gone with the biodegradable matting underneath this biodegradable mat it'll break down in three months so it'll feed your grass seeds and come through the grass growing through is the best anchor for this matting because you're going to have roots going down you're going to have roots going anchoring. down yeah and then you can mow over the top without hitting your blades on any of the any of the, the tops of the um the concrete 
And the big message when you're using this stuff, even when you're laying it down like this, is to make sure when you put it down that you anchor it properly. Yes, that's So that you don't get any corrugations or movement in the mat. Because yep. if you let water move the mat, you're going to be back to square one, aren't you? That's exactly right. And once it's actually anchored and the grass has grown through, you pretty much like here, you don't even see that the concrete's there. No. And you can grow, um, drive your tractors and everything over the Slash top. Over and the it's top not of actually it. making divots where the, the tracks are going to go. How far apart should people drive their anchors when they're putting this sort of matting in in a situation like this? I mean, this is a fair slope. Yeah, that's it. We only say every metre or so. Yep. And only on the edges. You only do across the, the top when you're doing the ends. Right. So it doesn't So you peel. just do the overlap for, throughout the rest. That's it, But yes. the edges are pin every metre on each side. Yeah, that's it. You can even, when you finish with this, throw some grass seed over the top, can't you? And yeah, and it will just pop straight up. You see here, the amount of stuff coming down from the hill is actually it's filled it up, it up and anyway. then the grass is grown through. So he, he didn't have to do anything. Nature did it. David, how are you, mate? Good, Dean, how are you? Mate, thank you so much for having me out here. I really appreciate no it. Yep. I'm keen to find out a little bit more about the concrete matting over time. Coming back and having a look at the concrete matting after a period of time to see if it's worked. Now, you've got a macadamia farm near Lismore, so it's fair to say you get a bit of rain? Oh, a lot. When it does rain, it's heavy. Yeah. So 200 mils is nothing yeah, for a rain event. That's right, you. yep. Um, and sometimes you get, what, two metres in a month? Yeah, yeah, and the ground never dries out, really, when you get that amount of rain, no. So we're, we're in the middle of your orchard at the moment. We've got a hill up that way above yep. us. Yep. And we've got a hill up that way above us, so yep. we're literally in a gully, and yep. your orchard runs through it. Yep. How difficult was it for you to get through that gully before you did this work? Nearly impossible. I'd had, I was saying to Troy before, I'd had three goes myself of yep. putting rock, all other things in the gully, as soon as the rain came, it just pushed those rocks out. I was back to square one again. So rocks didn't work. No, and so all the soil around. Else? Well, all the soil around the rocks was good to keep them washed out with the rain events. Okay, so the rock would sit there and then yeah, you know, just undermine it and off you go goes. again. Yeah. yeah right. So it just became a holes all the time. And you tried a few other things as well. Yeah, I put a couple of hay bales to try and deviate the rain to try and build that area up until I got it back to it, but yep. nothing worked. So hay bales at an angle, sort of yeah. to try and create leaky weirs almost, just That's throw right. the water down. Yeah, yeah, and just first it over a bigger area. Washed them away. Yeah. It's <laughs> so. a pain in the neck, isn't it? So how many times have you had to redo this gully? At least four. Right. And um, yeah, it's a, it was a long going event, just continually fixing it and yeah. coming back and then seeing it back to where we were again all the time. It's disheartening, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. So you've put in this um, concrete matting. Now, this is the concrete matting with the biodegradable, flexible matting underneath, isn't yep. it? So you can yep. actually twist it. When you laid it in, did you do any special work underneath at all? When Rod started, he actually dug it out to make it concaves as you can see so the mat fits in well so concave but <coughs> it's a very gentle concave exactly. slope isn't it you yeah. don't want to have something that's no, steep, steep when no. you're dealing with water because you concentrate force don't you that's right yeah. yeah so he's made it so the water will channel down it yep so then the mat then went into those dips that he's made and concave and, and fix it up to that point point. and did you have to pin it on the sides yes we okay. did that's a golden rule isn't it yes definitely on the sides? yes so there is how so far apart about a metre, and we did pin some in the centre as well to yep. make a real bird of it. Yep. We went the whole way. Um, oh, so right in the centre of yeah, the mating, yeah. you've got some pins as yeah. well. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, right so we'd just so he'd lay them out, we'd hit them in, and he'd push them in with his machine. He's amazing how he, he is. Does, isn't he, he is. <laughs> I was watching him this morning. The other secret is he pulls it so tight to start with. Right. So it's all tight and taut. Yep. Then you pin it. Okay. So it's not loose or slack anywhere. So as you go, you're tightening it up yeah. all the time. Yeah, and then yeah. he's putting the pins in to tighten it. So no gaps underneath. No, that's right. No waffles. Exactly. Yeah. So you can see how tight it is and it doesn't move. Yeah. And I've harvested through here. My wife's sprayed. We've done all sorts of work since. So you drive tractors but... over it. You're yep. obviously slashing right up to it. It doesn't yep. interfere with the slasher at all. So no. It doesn't interfere with your management? No, it just makes it so much easier, you don't even know it's there. David, this is a gully that you've just started work on. Um, your contractor, who's really good, had to go and do some other work. <laughs> so it's sort of paused, but I can see here you've got your pins driven ready for him to complete the process. And you've got a section of gully down there that's untreated, that was what the other gully we just looked at, that yeah. was what it was like. Yeah, exactly. And you can see the <coughs> mud, water and how this will eventually be like that one over there. And yeah. this is just the start of it. 
to um, get it finished. And I imagine you can't drive through that bit of boggy mess at the moment. No, I just get bogged. So yeah. I'm going up and around to get to that part of the orchard. Yeah, right. So this is going to increase your efficiency in no yeah. end. Plus, this leads down to the local creek. Yep. So we're not going to be having nutrients and runoff going into the local creek when you're finished as well because the grass will grow through and stabilise it. Exactly. That's exactly what's going to happen, yeah. So Dave, you're not just using the concrete mats in your orchard, you're also using them on your tracks and driveways around the farm? That's right. And this is a fairly steep example of one? Yes. And you've had this in place for how long? Over 12 months now. Yep. Have you experienced any erosion on what would be on the steeper side of a farm track? No, no. You can see that all the blue metal is holding in place. Yep. Um, which again comes back to that better base with the clay in it rather than just straight blue metal. Yeah, now you two were talking about that off camera, so it's really important for people to understand that if they're using this stuff and they're throwing metal over the top, that they've got to use road base, not crushed rock. There's That's a difference. Right. Yeah, blue metal just comes out when it hasn't got anything binding it. So you need you need the road base with the clay in it to yep. bind it together and Definitely. crush it together. Yep. Yeah, That's and certain. as long as you do that and you get your road right, it's going to hold. Yeah. Yeah. Now just up here is a masterclass in road building. You've got a very good contractor that did yep. this for you. And there's quite a few things that we can learn from up here yep. on how to build a track on your farm if you've got water problems. So can we go up here yeah, and have a look? Definitely. So like supermodels, mate, with roadways, shape is everything, isn't it? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So what are we seeing here? Talk me through the features of this roadway that you reckon have added to its longevity besides the fact that we've got concrete mats underneath. It's a two-fold effect. Any water that comes down the road, as you can see, yep. doesn't finish up on the road. It goes down this drain, the culvert, which is shaped so the water flows past without impacting the road. So you're virtually cutting the hill in half, aren't you? You're taking half the water off before it can build up momentum and volume and go down the second half and erode further. That's right. Like The other one was flatter, so it hasn't got the impact. This is steeper yep. and it's got a turn in it. Yes. So it just gets that water away from that. Throwing the water off the yeah. turn. And you've also got a fair sort of rise in the centre of the track as well. It's not a flat track, is it? It's well rounded. That's right. So any water will also run to the sides rather than down the middle. So it's all very well to use anti-erosion matting and all the rest of it. But if you don't have the basics of track formation sorted, it doesn't matter what you do. You may as well just throw a stick of gelignite out the window. Exactly, it all comes back to preparation and looking at the, the land and improving it. So you've combined good science with a good product and it's lasted more than 12 months good in result. Lismore. <laughs> good result. Awesome. <laughs> well there you go. Hopefully this has helped answer the requests that I've had for long-term evidence of concrete mats working. We've travelled up to Lismore, one of the highest rainfall areas in Australia, certainly famous for flooding, and we've had a look at the mats in several locations, both in the commercial nursery on tracks and driveways around the farm, as well as in the paddock. We've got some great tips for installing the mats, but we've also got some great tips for building farm tracks that stand the test of time. So I hope that that was useful for you. If it was, please do hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, it will help the channel. There's plenty more on timthompson.ag. Now I've just got to go find some macadamias. You stay there, I'll see you next week.